All right, there we go. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and while this may not be the most super duper over the top flashiest PC you've ever seen, for that I might have to recruit my friend Marcus from PC Centric to come over and help me build one with custom water loops and all that good stuff. But for me, in terms of the actual hardware and the components I've gone for in this build, it's absolutely my dream gaming and editing PC. Plus, as you can see, we've got all the go faster RGB lights you could throw a stick at. Okay, yes, this is all a bit showy-offy, which I don't normally like, and it is a really frustrating time to be a PC gamer right now. But this is less about, oh, look how good my PC is, maybe there's like a little bit of that, but it's more about uh, my thinking behind the components and this build, why I've gone for what I've gone with, and the lessons I've learned from building it. And a huge thank you to Corsair, AMD, Nvidia, and Sebrant for providing samples for this build, and I'll put links to everything I've used in the description below. First things first, the case. And I went with the Corsair 4000D Airflow in black. It does also come in white, which maybe I should have gone for to make it stand out a little bit more, but then I'd feel the need to go with white for all the other components, and then things would just get a bit tricky and more expensive. Anyway, 4000D Airflow, and I love just how compact this thing is, but there's still plenty of room for even the biggest graphics cards you can buy. And crucially, it has mesh top and front panels, which of course helps with the airflow, which we'll need given what's gonna go in here. Now, quick side note, because you may have seen my PC upgrade video from last year, about eight months or so ago, and if you did, then you'll know that that PC was not exactly sluggish. In fact, it had uh, an AMD uh, Threadripper 3970X, which is a 32 core, 64 thread chip, and costs about two grand. Absolutely overkill, and actually, it wasn't really the best choice for how I use my PC for gaming and 4K Premiere Pro editing. If you're maybe a Pixar animator or editing 8K workflows or you know doing CAD renderings, then maybe you'll take advantage of those cores. For my use cases, it just didn't really make sense. So actually I've gone down from a 32 core chip to a 16 core chip with the Ryzen 9 5950X. But crucially, we have the newer Zen 3 architecture and also much higher clock speeds. And actually, this is noticeably faster in my day-to-day -day use. However, if you're just going to build a purely gaming PC, I would probably save a couple of hundred quid and go with Intel's latest flagship, the 11900K, because while frustratingly it does only have 8 cores, 16 threads, we do get the higher clock speed and also it's a bit cheaper as well. So for purely gaming, that would probably be a better bet, better value bet. But since this is both my gaming and workstation PC, AMD's flagship chip makes more sense. And right now, I don't think there's a better all-round productivity and gaming CPU than the 5950X. It also means I'm not going to throttle the RTX 3090 Founders Edition card that I'm using in here. Now, I'll be totally upfront because no one really should buy this card. The 3090 just doesn't make sense uh, for most consumers given the price. Realistically, the new 3080 Ti, which I recently reviewed, is for all intents and purposes the new gaming flagship, but even that doesn't represent good value over the 3080. It's about 10% faster, but 40 to 60% more expensive. So if I was gonna go out and buy a graphics card now, assuming I actually could, and it wasn't for a ridiculous price as well, I would personally probably go with the RTX 3080. That's like the best value flagship card in my opinion right now. But at the same time, the 3090 is unquestionably the fastest gaming and also consumer productivity card you can buy. And of course, we're getting double the VRAM 24 gigs versus the 12 gigs on the 3080 Ti. And also this bigger heatsink as well. This is the Founders Edition card, but I would suggest going with a third party like the ASUS Tough series, especially on higher end and more uh, power hungry cards as the more robust aftermarket cooling and also the extra overclocking headroom is nice to have. So Ryzen 9 5950X paired with the RTX 3090, and then I've also got 64 gigs of uh, Corsair's Dominator Platinum RGB RAM. It's 3600 megahertz. And while you could go crazy with 128 gigs, 64 is still more than enough for me. Even with a 4K video rendering and a game running, I never go above like 30 or 35 gigs. And this all sits on the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero ATX motherboard. This seemed to have the best reviews for an X570 board without going crazy on something like the MSI Godlike. But importantly, we get two M2 slots and they're both PCIe 4, onboard Wi-Fi 6, USB-C. And in my experience, I've always found ASUS boards nice to use and they're solid for overclocking. I have maybe gone 
a little bit crazy with the storage though. We've got 10 terabytes in here split between two drives. The main boot drive is one of Corsair's crazy fast MP600s, two terabytes, PCI-4. This thing is a beast. I mean, it even has its own built-in heatsink. And we're looking at some pretty ridiculous speeds, which is roughly twice as fast as my second drive, which is an eight terabyte PCIe 3 Sabrent Rocket M2. 10 terabytes is an awful lot of storage, but somehow it's getting filled up pretty quickly. I think that's mainly because I shoot these videos in 10-bit 4K and also make proxies as well, so that adds up. Plus I've got a dozen or so games installed. So obviously PCI-4 drives are a good deal faster. We're looking at almost twice the speeds on the MP600 versus the Sabrent rocket, which is a big deal in terms of benchmarks, but in reality, you'd really struggle to tell the difference. I don't think PCI-4 is really necessary yet. Realistically, I just stick with PCI-3, unless maybe it doesn't cost that much more and you're just gonna go with a boot drive, uh, PCI-4 drive, in which case maybe to make it a bit more future-proof, but it's not really necessary. Okay, so for cooling, I've gone with the 360ml Corsair H150i Elite liquid cooler for the CPU. And I've actually paired this with three Corsair QL120 RGB fans. All these get great reviews and they use the IQ software, so it's nice and easy to control the RGB lighting. And all that is powered by a 1000 watt Corsair RM1000X fully modular PSU. And so that is the build. And for the benchmarking enthusiasts amongst you, here's what I'm getting in a couple of tests. Although I'm sure I can squeeze out a bit more performance if I spend some time giving this a proper overclock, but even these vanilla numbers are pretty tasty. Corsair also sent over a few extras, including the Sabre RGB Pro mouse, the K70 RGB TKL mechanical gaming keyboard with Cherry MX switches, and they're both part of their Champion Gaming series. And to tie it all together, I've got the fancy Corsair MM7000 RGB Extended Cloth Gaming Mat, which I thought I would hate, but actually I quite like it. The lip of the mat doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would, and it gives me an extra USB port. Lots of cables though, as you can see, which doesn't look quite as smart as having fully wireless peripherals, but then again, these are designed for proper competitive gaming. So as you can see, I've gone with a new enough full Corsair build here. The benefit to sticking with one brand uh, when it comes to your peripherals and your fans and your RGB RAM is that you can then sync it all up using just one program, their IQ app, uh, which is so much easier than having two or three from different brands if you've mixed and matched your hardware. I'm not saying that's the best value approach uh, or it's for everyone, but that is definitely an advantage to sticking just with one brand. But all this is a complete waste of time if you don't also then pair it with a pretty capable monitor that can fully take advantage of the performance that we get from it. So if you're a regular on the TechChap channel, you'll be pretty familiar with this big guy behind me. It's the LG 38WN95C. I've been using this as my main monitor for about four or five months now, and I absolutely love it. 38 inches, 3840 by 1600, so that's a 21 by 10 aspect ratio, which means it's slightly taller than your regular ultra wide, so it feels a bit less narrow. Up to 144 hertz or 120 hertz with 10 bit color, which is what I use. G-Sync, HDR, dedicated color profile modes like sRGB and DCI-P3. It's genuinely the perfect match for this PC because it's great for gaming and also color accurate enough for editing. Plus it's bloody huge, which is handy for having two or three apps side by side, or just a really immersive full screen gaming experience. I also use a pair of SteelSeries headphones, mainly for gaming, uh, although for editing as well, but of course they're not professionally accurate, but good enough for what I do to be honest. And in terms of the desk itself, well, that's probably the one thing that needs a bit of an upgrade. It's the same IKEA Colby worktop on top of a couple of Alex drawers that I've had since I started this YouTube channel like six years ago now. So that is definitely in need of an upgrade, as is this whole room actually, because I'm currently in uh, my new house, but in this temporary office, because at the moment I'm renovating my double garage. I'm very lucky to have that extra space and I'm putting some money into turning it into a new studio, which I cannot wait to show you. Right now it's a complete mess, uh, but in the next few weeks, I'll share some stuff on Instagram and also uh, give you an updated setup tour. 
But in terms of the new PC build for 2021, this is absolutely perfect for me. You could go a bit more over the top with custom water looping and some fancy cabling. Maybe that's something I'll do in the future. But for now, I'm really, really happy with this. I love the case, uh, the 4000D, although I think I would go with the white one uh, if I were to do this again. Obviously, we do have Corsair's 5000 series, which is a little bit newer, but really the only difference is the size. They're a bit bigger. And I just didn't really want that uh, for my setup, for my desk. So I'm really happy with the size of this. But what about you? What would be your dream PC in terms of specs? And would you go Intel or AMD? Let me know in the comments below, as well as give me some desk recommendations if you've got any. As I say, links to everything I've talked about today in the description below. And if you enjoyed the video and want to see more from me, then a cheeky little like and subscribe would be lovely. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat.